body of phantoms and monsters. They exist among us, and sometimes they win. Even the devil was an angel once. The world has its own rules, and these rules are not human. Some of us seek answers to the origin and existence of cryptids and the unexplained. Join us as we venture beyond the known and accepted boundaries. Welcome to our nightmare. I think you're going to like it. Hey folks, good evening and welcome to Phantoms Monsters Personal Reports where I narrate and discuss some of the cryptid and unexplained sightings and encounters submitted to Phantoms of Monsters and the Phantoms of Monsters 14 research team. So thanks for joining me. Uh, the channel is made possible by you clicking, subscribing and liking or using the like buttons and by sharing our programming. Uh, super chat and super thanks are donations are always appreciated. Uh, you can just use the dollar icon underneath the chat. And uh, the Buy Me a Coffee link and banner are also available. So thanks for your consideration. Now, if you're in the chat and you do have a question, please use all caps. But please save it until the end of the presentation. I'll let you know when I get to my last account. And you can start posting questions. So tonight, the Grinning Man. So... Who or what is the Greening Man? Uh, <laughs> most people believe that the nexus of this phenomena began with uh, Woodrow Derringer's encounter with the supposed extraterrestrial named Indrid Cold. Uh, others have stated that a mysterious Greening Man is said to appear and terrorize UFO witnesses like the Men in Black scenarios. So what is it? Uh, you know, over the years, I've received many eyewitness reports of encounters with bizarre individuals who possess a wide, almost comical, toothy grin. And as a result of these events, the, the eyewitnesses usually felt confused and in most cases, somewhat shaken. So sit back, relax, ponder what I'm about to describe to you, and I'll uh, present reports and incidents in detail and try to answer all your questions from the chat room. So here we go. Uh, first account, I, uh, I, received, I recently moved out of a nightmare apartment. We had a house built on the opposite side of town on old farmland. I thought I had done everything right. Even had a rabbi, I was raised Jewish, come and bless the house. It has been about six months since we moved in, but it seems like everywhere we go, something keeps happening. We have literally moved four times in four years to locations in three different states. Now, I had some weird feelings one night and woke up to see a girl with long, dark hair in a white-looking nightgown standing next to my bed, staring at my wife. It moved towards my wife. And... I blinked and then it was gone. And I thought was my daughter screaming. I thought maybe she was having a nightmare. So I got up from bed only to see something that still bothered me to this day. Standing in my laundry room was a man in a gray suit. The top of his head was above the doorpost. And he had the most disturbing, creepy grin. It was almost comical looking. Uh, as soon as I saw him, he began to dissipate, almost as if he was in water. And as he was fading away, I had an intrusive thought enter my head. This idea or thought entered my mind telling me that I was not meant to see him. It wasn't for me. Even now, I feel as if someone is watching us, just lurking in the shadows. The next morning, I told my wife about what happened. And to my surprise, she responded, you finally saw him too. She begins to tell me how she keeps seeing the same grinning man. She tells me that, he, that uh, she's seen him in the neighbor's yard along the tree line, 
just standing there watching. When she looked at the, the side mirror to double check what she saw, the mirror was blacked out, almost like a void. It happened about six times now in different places. She also gets this intrusive thoughts, but each time it's the same. I was waiting for you. I am watching. The more I try to think about it and try to remember the details of it, I get a migraine. Every so often, I will see what looks like a shadow peeking around the corner or moving quick around the room. I just wish I knew why these things keep happening. So this next incident took place near Wheeling, West Virginia in the, uh, during the winter of 2002. They state, I've seen a few people, uh, though, I, though I can trust, for their honest opinion. Ever since it occurred, I've been puzzled and frightened. I'm going to be specific and honest about all the details. Please don't judge me. But my girlfriend and I used to go to a local treatment center for opiate addiction and counseling. Since starting treatment, I have remained clean and I'm proud of that. It's been difficult, but with diligence and support, we've both gotten through it. Though, I can honestly say that this incident I'm about to describe made breaking my dependency more difficult. Many of our appointments were in the evening around 5 to 6 p.m. The center is about a mile off the interstate on a wooded road and a few other businesses around. It can be a very dark road even before the sun goes down. Now, on this day, it was about 5.15 p.m. and dark, except for a few sparsely placed light street lights. It was extremely cold, and there was about an inch or so of snow on the ground. We had just driven off the interstate exit onto the, the wooded road when we noticed someone headed ahead of us on the right shoulder walking towards the center. I thought it might be another patient, so I asked my girlfriend if she knew who it was and that, and that we could give him a, a lift. So as we approached, I slowed down to get a good look at this person. When I got near, the figure stopped and turned its head and looked directly at us. What I witnessed was the most terrifying thing I've ever seen. It had a dark colored clothing and a hooded jacket of some kind. The face, well, it just wasn't human. It had a huge evil smile on its face. The smile literally went from one side of the face to the other and the teeth were enormous, but not sharp. The teeth reminded me of horse teeth and overall expression was like that of the Joker from the animated Batman TV cartoon. I remember my girlfriend gasped, then ducked to, to hide her face. We didn't stop, but I had to get another look. I needed to figure out what it was we saw. I turned the car around in the driveway and went back. My girlfriend quickly crawled into the back seat and covered herself up. She didn't want any part of this. I turned around and reached the spot where we had seen it no more than 30 seconds, but it was gone. There was nowhere this thing could have gone. There's a high leak fence between the road and the edge of the woods. On the other side of the road is a creek. This thing simply vanished. Another car was coming from the direction of the interstate and slowed to see if everything was all right. I asked if they had seen anybody walking on the shoulder, but they said they had not. After we couldn't find it, I asked my girlfriend to describe to me what she saw. She also compared it to the Joker. We're still a couple and have talked about this experience in detail many times. I don't know what it was, but I know it was not human. It seemed evil. I felt it deep in my soul. Now, I know how this comes across, but I assure you this incident is 100% true. In 18 months since we witnessed this thing, I still have not received any plausible explanation. Was it natural, which I doubt, or a real monster? I'd appreciate your thoughts. Well, I'd be honest with you, I didn't really have any much any idea what to tell them. I mean, you know, you know, these these things show up and you know, what can you say? Especially if it takes off or disappears, there's not much you can say. Um, next account, 
In early April of 2017, I required a CAT scan at a local hospital here in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm sitting in the waiting area with a couple of other people. Now, each person was called and taken in by a woman. I was the last one left waiting for an unreasonably long time, so I kept looking for anyone to call me for my scan. After a while, I became restless, so I got up and looked in the CAT scan hallway, but no one seemed to be there. I walked over to another area with reception desk, but no one was there either. I thought they must be all at lunch on a lunch break, and I was not happy, so I went back to my seat. A few minutes later, the CAT scan hallway door opened, and I'm expecting to see the same woman asking me to come in, but this time a man came out. The only words that I can write to describe him are that he was bizarre and downright hideous looking. Exceptionally tall and thin, he had a strange looking suit and tie. His eyes were just slits. His skin was scarred and he was completely bald. My initial thought was, there is no way that this guy works here. He looks so horrid. He would simply scare children and have the people who need his scans. He also had the most insidious wide grin. I really wasn't scared, but completely perplexed why this guy would be allowed to work in this environment. He called out my first name and took great pains to pronounce it. I followed him in and sat on the scan table. He went around the corner, but kept looking at me through the window. Then he was gone. I waited for several more minutes until two other men came in to do my scan. I don't know why, but I, but I didn't ask about the weird looking guy. In fact, I forgot about him. That was until I was at a friend's home a few weeks later and her sister dropped in for a visit. She mentioned that she worked at the same hospital in the radiology department. So I asked her who the bar, bizarre man that worked there was. She gave me a bewildered look and told me that she had no idea what I was talking about. She asked me, to detail his appearance to her, she again affirmed that no one with that description worked there and, it be and became somewhat hostile at my assistant on what I saw. A week later, I went to my doctor for the results. His words were, I'm sorry, but this, this is quite unusual. Your CAT scan is missing. The scan and report vanished and couldn't be found. Now I wonder if the weird grinning man was responsible. So this next encounter. Now this encounter has been on my mind for some time and I'm looking for some answers or information. I just didn't know where to post and who to ask for help. I was 18 when this happened. I and my older cousin, who was 19 at the time, were coming back from a family party. So our spirits were high even though it was two in the morning on our route home, there was a very long road that was quite wide and on both sides. There were tall trees. Not something you'd call a forest, but dense enough it creates darkness on each side. However, on the left side, there's a thin strip of sidewalk and on the right, the sidewalk is wider, so wide you could you probably drive down it. We were just having a heart-to-heart -heart talk about various things like traveling our family generally and what we want our future to be like. We weren't driving fast at all because we really, we didn't really want to go home. I caught something out of the corner of my eye. Not knowing what it was, I turned to look out my window, but I couldn't see anything. And in my gut, I felt something was off and a wave of sadness came over me for no specific reason. I just felt like crying. I was about to ask my cousin if he was all right but when I looked up, I saw a figure run from the left side of the sidewalk to the right. It scared me so much because I've never seen anything like this before. It looked like a human, but I knew it couldn't be as it was extremely tall and so skinny and its arms were long and looking and looked to be thin. My cousin slammed on the brakes and I knew that what I just saw, he saw as well. Wanting to know what it was, I looked to the right side and I was utterly confused. A man on the right sidewalk was sitting there on his bike. He looked at us and smiled. 
He was wearing cycling gear and his bike was on the ground. I was shocked and confused. Why would he be cycling at two in the morning? I crawled over the console and leaned over to my cousin. So my face was right up to the window. I stared at the man. He smiled back at me. But his smile had changed. It was so wide and toothy. He looked kind of normal, but so out of place. As I examined him more, I noticed he only had one ear and where it should be was totally flat, but everything else was just what you expect a human to look like. The man stood up and my cousin pulled me away from the window and back into my seat. He drove off so fast I didn't even have time to look through the mirrors to look back at the man. I tried to talk to my cousin about that night and various other times and at various other times, but it just snapped at me, telling me to drop the topic and never bring it up to around him again. I know what I saw, but at the same time, I had no clue what it was. Text account. Now, I've been reading your blog since 2005. I have been a ufology, paranormal researcher, and agnostic since the late 1990s. I never thought I would become a victim or witness. I still don't know why I was visited back in 2012. It happened late at night when I was just getting into bed. I was not asleep at the time it happened seconds after. I was lying on my side facing the wall when suddenly I heard footsteps on the wooden floor. It sounded like when my dogs walked around with claws on their, on their feet, it must have it must have thought I was sleeping, I think, because when I turned around to see what the hell was in my room, it was visibly upset that I saw it. I was instantly horrified at the sight of this humanoid-looking demon or alien with the evil's grin you could imagine. I will never forget its sharp razor teeth that looked like metal. It had a pen or one type weapon in one of its hands and its hands had very sharp fingernails. It reminded me of a dinosaur and a demon. It had horns on its head, but it also had insect features to it. And it was wearing clothes, a one-piece turtleneck black uniform with a weird symbol on it. Now, as I tried to get up and run out of the room, I was shocked when I couldn't move. I was paralyzed. When I screamed for help, there was no sound, which made me even more terrified. The next thing I remember was a very bright white light, but then I blacked out. I woke 15 minutes later, terrified and unable to sleep. I didn't sleep at night for a decade after that incident, and I'm still unable to sleep at night. I removed the mirror from my room that day because I had a weird feeling it was connected somehow. I have been, I, I have been visiting since, but they only visit me when I... I have been visited since, but they only visit me when I'm sleeping and do not let me recall any memories from them. I'm alone in defenses against them every night. I have a feeling I have been visited since I was a child. They could take me all they could take me at will and, and I could go missing at any time. I tried to draw a description of it, uh, of it the day after, but it had trouble recalling anything other than that grin. Thanks for reading. Now, you know, these grinning entities tend to appear a lot after traumatic events, even troubled times, maybe. Uh, a lot of times, they it does seem that they have similar energy to shadow figures. Are they related? I don't know. Uh, both could be non-terrestrial or non-human beings. And I, uh, I feel that in this instance in particular, that they could be energy fielders and dangerous to the living, just like shadow people. So I, I don't know, uh, you know, victims need to initiate acts to remove these entities as opposed to outside help. And um, I don't know, you know, just cases like that, you can call someone in to help you out, but normally there's something going on within the household that they need to take care of themselves to try to alleviate this. So uh, that might be what's going on there. 
So this next this next account, this happened back in 1992. I only told a few people about this, and they look at me like I'm crazy. I had a regular place where I would stop and pick up pop or, you know, soda or water or whatever. I went to the cooler, got water, walked and got in line, got in line behind a guy, and I never smelled anything so much like a gutted deer. I'm a hunter. It didn't compare to this. It was close, but it didn't compare to this. You know, if you have a kid or whatever, you know when a kid is sick, you can feel the fever coming off of him. That is what I felt. And I was like, surely this guy knows that other people can smell this. I looked and there were three other, three or four other people there in line behind me. But they were all nonchalant fiddling with their own purchases and whatever they were doing. And I looked at the guy behind the counter. I looked at him and he looked at like nothing was going on. So the guy in front of me steps up, got a pack of cigarettes. They were Marlboros in a box. I remember that. He got a pack, and I'm like, I'm almost gagging. Okay, like I said, I, I got a deer before, and it and it did. It's close, but it didn't quite smell the same. And the heat was like it was standing in front of one of those heat lamps at the Burger King or something. And I'm thinking, like, I'm sure everyone can smell this, but right then he turned. I'm facing the counter. I guess you'd call it quartering. His right shoulder was kind of lined up with my left, and I'm standing about two feet behind him. I'm 6'1", so he was probably 6'4", and as he turned, have you ever had a joke, like a private joke between you and a friend? You give each other that look? He did that out of the corner of his eye. He kind of just sort of turned his head, cocked his lips, and he was looking at me out of the corner of his eye like he was smiling at me. It looked like his mouth didn't fit his teeth. Now, they weren't pointed or jagged, but it was like the skin was stretched. He turned, kind of sort of cocked his head at me, gave me this sort of weird half-lit grin and walked away. It scared me. Now, to this day, I mean, I even had nightmares about it. I never smelled anything like it. As I got closer to it, the heat was like an infection. And I looked at the lady behind me, and she was messing with her, whatever she had in her hand. And I thought I, that she would wince, but I don't know. It was the most bizarre thing. So to this day, I still think about it. He was wearing Levi's, a, a pair of cowboy boots, black braided leather belt, a nice Oxford shirt that was tucked in. He had, had short hair for 1992. I do remember that. So I don't know what this guy ran into. So here's the last account. So if you have questions, go ahead and start putting them up and I'll get to them. This, this is an interesting account because it has to do with two grinning men encounters, 25 years apart. Now this happened about 25 years ago. It happened only once, meaning that it hadn't, hasn't followed me around like some people report. I'm driving in Torrington, Connecticut while driving up a kind of crummy industrial street, I looked forward to seeing how the street was twisting. While about 100 yards ahead of me on the driver's side of the sidewalk, I saw a figure. I could tell he or she was dark, tall, and walking very fast as if in a hurry to get somewhere. Now, my wife was in the car also, so she kept my eye, so I kept my eyes on him. Now, as I approached him or her, perhaps within 30 yards, he suddenly whipped around, looked straight at me. Now, I saw the entire figure dressed in black, big floppy black leather hat, big floppy black cape, black suit, except for the white shirt, with perhaps a red string tie, pointy black boots or shoes. He was very tall, over 6'6", extremely thin. His face, well, it was very long and thin also. He had a jutting jaw, huge dark eyes, heavy brow, and the most prominent feature, an incredibly long nose. I mean, stunningly so. He was grinning, but not a friendly or cocky grin. It was a menacing, mean grin, a grin that someone would use when they were saying, I got you, or something hideous like that. He kept looking at me as I drove past him. 
just me, not the car, not my wife, nothing but me, or so I felt. So I drove past him. I looked in the rearview mirror. He kept his eyes on me. His grin was wider, and for her, perhaps he was laughing. I've forgotten. I kept driving until he was out of sight. My wife saw him. She confirmed what, she, what I saw. Nowadays, though, she isn't so sure. Was this thing perhaps the hat man? I read up on this, and while some things match, others don't. His features were clear. Not shadowy, but it was filled with dread, even though it was daylight, and there was nothing really to get freaked out about. I don't really shake easily, but he got he got burned in my head, and he's been there for 25 years. I never seen him again. He didn't follow me, and thank God I couldn't handle that, but there was something sinister about him. Usually, when I see a weirdo, I may feel sorry for him or her, but this just wasn't the case. I was scared, plain and simple. So that was the email. But strangely enough, I got another email just a few weeks after this one. Same guy. I thought that this was my first and only time seeing this character. I even began feeling guilty that I thought this poor soul might may have been evil. But now, 25 years later, I had a second encounter with this thing, this time under much more puzzling circumstances. I was driving home from work, the road damp from a slight drizzle that had stuck around all day. Usually, I'm a fast driver, always driving the maximum speed allowed by Connecticut law. I'm not used to being passed by other vehicles, but look, looking in my side mirror, I could tell that a car was about to pass me with ease. As he pulled even with me, the car slowed down in order to match my speed, and it, it, he stared into my car. At first, I thought it was a friend who recognized my vehicle. Looking into the car, I saw a man driving, all decked out in big three musketeer type hat. I thought he was simply a weird dude until he turned to meet my stare, and it all came rushing back. This was the same guy or looked like the dude I saw 25 years ago. Same gigantic nose, cheesy mustache, and goatee, same huge chin, and then he smiled, and it all came flooding back, the terrifying, taunting, evil, teeth-filled grin. It sent shivers up my spine. Then something weird happened. Throwing his head back at what I saw as a terrifying laugh, he sped up and pulled ahead of me in the left lane. Then I experienced something I couldn't explain. When he was about 20 yards ahead of me, he suddenly took a right-hand turn at 70 miles per hour. He didn't pull into my lane. He just made a 90-degree turn as one would do when turning the corner of a street. I missed his rear quarter paddle by a mere inch. When I looked in the rear view mirror, I expected to see him spun out out of control or smashed up against another vehicle but I simply saw him traveling across the highway, heading at high speed towards the wall, lining the freeway. Not a chance he could avoid it. He was hustling toward a sure fatal crash with the wall when he suddenly disappeared. There was no crashing sound, no nothing. He was gone. I was shocked. How could a car doing 70 make a 90 degree turn? How did he just disappear? How could I have been on the other car on a busy highway during rush hour? And why 25 years later? Hat man? Weirdo? This episode is much harder to explain than the initial meeting. The initial meeting. So that's my story. This thing, is a, this thing is a creep. Seems to enjoy scaring the crap out of me. Oh, and it, it makes things even weirder. My wife now swears she remembers no such being ever crossing our paths. So there you go. So if you got questions, please feel free to put it up there in the chat. And I will try to answer them as I look back. And uh, Calico Gwen, thank you for the super sticker. I much appreciate it. Okay, short order cook. 
Were these instances in close proximity or adjoining states? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I mix, well, the one was Connecticut. The other one was in West Virginia. So they weren't that close together. Marla Snyder, any reports of the gridding man being aggressive? Well, you know, that last account seems somewhat aggressive. I, um, you, you know, this, this whole grinning man thing, like I said earlier, goes back to the, the Woody Derringer thing. And a lot of people believe that it has something to do with the Mothman phenomenon since it was so close and around the same time. I don't know if that's true. You know, I've talked to, to Raymond Keller about that. Him and I talked about that a lot. He seems to think it is connected to Mothman, the grinning man are injured cold. And of course, I, I've had some incidents reported to me where there could be a connection with injured cold in the malt man. But as far as what people saw in these accounts, I don't know if that's really true or not. I, I um, It just seems to me that it's some unexplained entity for the most part, uh, maybe like like Hat Man or, you know, some, um, some malevolent being. You know, they, there's also people who state that these these um, these grinning men do show up after UFO and possibly alien sightings, almost like the men in black. So uh, I don't know if they're related or not. Pretty weird, though. Uh, Marla asked again, do you think the grinning man is a watcher? Could be. Could be. Uh, now, I don't know in what definition you mean as a watcher um but if you if you if you're talking about um unknown entities that just watch humans uh that feed off humans and such yeah it could, very well could be i think it is a good possibility that these are like shadow people that they do feed off our energy and it could be dangerous um uh, shorter to cook the screening man seems very intimidating on purpose yeah it does and i it seems to be a rhyme or reason as to why they do that uh is it shock is it just their nature I don't know. but um it's pretty interesting you know and I, I don't get a lot of them i've had a few interesting ones over the years uh those reports i gave you were a span of 15 years or so so um yeah Jose Sanchez, could the Grinning Man be a type or a variation of a rake? I, I guess it could be, um, but doubtful. And when you say rake, I, I imagine you're talking about what people refer to as the crawler humanoids or, you know, this, you know these, these emaciated, very pale, hairless humanoids that people see that I wrote a book about and still don't know what it is. <laughs> Could it be? Yeah, I guess it could be, but I, I'm not really sure if that's the case. Uh, Jan's Roost. The stinky smell could mean the demonic, but but, but, but have you heard other accounts of smell like cryptids? Yeah, yeah, we do. Uh, especially humanoids. Uh, we ha I have had um, sighting encounters with that reported me, uh, even winged humanoids, where they have a pretty distasteful odor. You know, the, the, the Chicago sightings, we've had some accounts where um, people mentioned that get close to it of a, an ammonia smell. Now, and I'm talking about really rancid ammonia smell. Now, I don't know what that is, uh, but it could be, you know, it could be something to do with phenomena. So um, as far as cryptids go, other, you know, you're talking about Bigfoot stuff. Like, yeah, there's smell, but it's normally the same garbage, disgusting smell. As far as a humanoid in a setting like, like in a, in a convenience store, that's a little bit different. And the fact that nobody else noticed it is kind of bizarre. Uh, 
Uh, Can's clutch. Are the green men possibly other consciousnesses in human form? Yeah, it could be. Yeah, I mean, it could have been extraterrestrial, non-terrestrial. Could it be something other than a, a human being? Oh, absolutely. Anything else, folks? I think I got somebody calling me to try to give me a report. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, anyway, look, uh, thanks to each and all for watching and chatting. And uh, if you donate, it's truly appreciated. Uh, your support to make all this possible. So please like and subscribe and share. If you have a sighting or encounter report that you'd like to be considered for the personal report sh show or posting on Fams and Monsters, feel free to contact me at lawnstricklerfamsandmonsters.com. So until we meet again, stay healthy, safe, and have a good night.